Just before you watch this episode, we had a technical issue with the camera while recording this and uh, the video file became corrupt. How corrupt? I don't know. Didn't work. Maybe perhaps as corrupt as uh, many of the governments that we uh, have in our planet right now. Either way, what you're going to be seeing is my face looking like this for the entire episode, unfortunately, as I have this amazing conversation with Mark Angelo Coppola. At least I'll be smiling the whole time. Enjoy the episode. All right, welcome to another show. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, a good interview with a good friend of mine named Mark Angelo Coppola. He's, uh, he's got a lot of stuff under his belt that he has done. Uh, everything from running a farm in Montreal, Canada to you know being an entrepreneur, running an online school called Superhero Academy. And, and what he does specifically with Superhero Academy and even the farm stuff is kind of what initiated you know, this whole conversation, because, you know, you're, you're posting on Instagram and this is, well, let's just dive right into this and, and what the topic is all about here, because you posted on Instagram, uh, you know, some of your feet, your uh, reflections, right? Some of the story about this whole idea of, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and sort of, there's been a culture and I'll let you, I'll let it come right out of your mouth, but I'll kind of just set it up a little bit, but there's been a culture for a little while, right? And I've experienced this and, you know, in a few years prior and stuff like that. And, where it's like you just got to hustle, you just got to go, you just got to keep making everything work, you just got to keep chasing, you just got to keep chasing, you just got to keep building, you got to do this. And then if you throw in these routines and these wellness practices, you know, you can you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. And, and eventually everybody hits this point where it's like, you know what, it doesn't matter how much wellness, how many routines, how many everything, this is not sustainable. Not only that, it's like, what are we doing here? And I think this is something a lot of people are gonna relate to, even people who aren't entrepreneurs, because we're gonna be talking about like the, the totality of life and how busy it can be and what sort of is expected, if you will, within our own expectations of ourselves. But, but take us deeper on this. Like when you were writing that post, first tell us a little bit about the post and then you know a little bit about what you were feeling when you decided yeah. to write it. Yeah, I, I you know, I think what I was feeling at the moment I was ranting on Instagram and I was doing these kind of long format stories where I write a bunch of text and you have to kind of hold your finger on it to, to read and pay attention, but uh, they're doing really well, right? A lot of people really are kind of appreciating kind of this format of storytelling. Um, but the, the real truth for me is that I was feeling incredibly overwhelmed. Yeah. I was just like running in every direction. And, and, you know, in my intro, you, you heard that I'm a farmer. So obviously it's farming season here now in Montreal. So there's lots of stuff to do on the farm, but I'm also an entrepreneur and I've also done a ton of consulting marketing work. I've run agencies, a bunch of teams. I mean, you name it, I've done it in terms of the world of business. And, and I've even worked with collective evolution, making content yeah. and supporting and bringing advertisers and, and finding ways to kind of make amazing content reach your feed, reach what, what you guys are creating and doing. And what I could say is that it's this ever increasing challenge because there's always a shifting and dynamic landscape on everything, right? Yeah. Whether it be out in the farm with the weather uh, and the fact that we were having a, a huge drought until today, um, the, ch the <laughs> dynamic of the algorithms, right? You, you're building a whole business online, making really great content, building a list, and all of a sudden the algorithms, you know, go haywire and, and censorship and fake news and all those different things start to, to cramp uh, down on so many organizations, including CE, of course. Um, but I think most importantly, it was w the pressure that we put upon ourselves by the people that we watch or some of the content that we consume right. having a deeper and deeper impact on like what we should be doing and and this constant state of optimization or of efficiency or of hustle or of trying to do more, 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 more. Yeah. And essentially, I was like buried in the idea that somehow doing more equaled better. Right. And, right. and that feeling of more, 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 more then is, is just as empty as the feeling that we know that that comes with like trying to buy happiness, right? right? Like, oh, well, if I buy more, another pair of shoes or a new jacket, I'm going to feel better. And and that might be true in a particular moment. And, and you know, that that is a it may, maybe gives you that dopamine hit or gives you that rush or that that chemical feeling that says, oh, wow, I feel good about myself. Or I feel, you know, like this complements my life in some way, shape or form. When you're doing that over and over and over and over again, and you're constantly trying to keep up with the different routines of, what it is to be a conscious person, 
right? And what it is to live life to your fullest and kind of live your best life as, as the Instagram world would love to call it, then you're really caught in this, in this storm of, of tasks that you need to do, right? Like you have to wake up in the morning, you have to drink some, uh, some water with, with uh, some uh, lemon in it because yeah. that's really good for balancing your pH. But you shouldn't have coffee, but coffee makes you hustle a little bit more. So, but you should also have vitamin D, but should you go outside to get vitamin D or should you just order it in a thing? Should you do this, you do that. Like, what about this thing? Or what about that thing? Or, yeah. oh, but did you work on this thing? Or like, don't give up, but always give up when the going gets tough, right? right? It's like right. the meme culture is basically in every direction. Every direction. And so every Everything that we're consuming and everything that's coming in our direction when it comes to health and wellness, when it comes to being an entrepreneur or having a great career, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, um, and when it comes to your capacity to just even discern the truth behind what is being told to you and, and there's you know, really good wise advice and what is being sold to you as just the next gimmick, the next thing that you need to be worrying about and taking care of. And it feels like there we're constantly barraged with this and yeah. the more content we consume, the more that that overwhelmed feeling kind of comes up. And, and so I just went on a rant about that. And, uh, and I think it resonated with a bunch of people including you, Joe. Yeah, for sure. You know, cause it's like, it's one of those things uh, when you, when you were writing about it, I, I was thinking to myself like, man, this, this documentary idea that I've had in my mind for a little while, uh, you know, it's since it actually came in, in January, uh, I wanted to make a documentary, a little short sort of film like I did with regenerate, um, talking about this very idea of, of how, and I've, I've felt this way for a long time and I've, I've put it in memes, you know, going back to meme culture, right? I've put mm -hmm. it in memes. I've put it in uh, articles. I've, I've said it on podcasts that, you know, that I really believe we're sort of using some of this personal development and this wellness, uh, you know, we're using it to, um, almost be like band-aids or coping mechanisms for a much greater challenge that we're experiencing, which is that, we and this is fascinating. We I just did another interview about this uh, earlier this week, but you have you have coming up within us is this emerging consciousness that wants you know greater connection with others in humanity. We want to do what we're called to do deep inside. We want to uh, kind of move away from some of the you know the insanity, if you want to call it that, of of our modern life. Right, the the constant go go go. The, the nobody's connected to one another. Nobody's communicating. We're not doing anything that we're fulfilled by. Right. So we have this this emerging consciousness that's asking for something different. But then we're using the old consciousness to try and inform the new consciousness as to how we're supposed to go about living our lives, right? And so wellness is like, okay, so you have this new emerging consciousness, but you still have to live in the old sort of world, if you will, right? And so that is built around insanity. So it's like, okay, well, you got to remain conscious. So meditate twice a day, uh, yoga once a day, lemon water twice a day, uh, this supplement, that thing, uh, you know, do this, uh, say gratitude things, you know, over and over and over again, uh, write in your journal and say this, and all these different things have to happen as a bandaid for something that if we don't address the systems and infrastructures and the way our entire system is built, which is causing us to have to go crazy all the time, right? Then, mm -hmm. then we're not really addressing anything. And the kicker to that is that really it's, it's our own programming that is keeping this world alive, right? That is, that is saying this is the world we need to live in. And so I, 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 when I had that idea for the documentary and then I, I, I saw you write that, I was just like, you know what, let's have this like conversation around, you know, to, to help for, with people that are perhaps on this path or that are perhaps even curious, like they feel it somewhere within them, like, I can't seem to make it work. And everybody's telling me I just got to do that next thing or, you know, this is the next course. or the next, but, but, it, but it still just doesn't feel right. And I think people want to know, they want to feel like it's okay to not jump on that, that crazy train of go, 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 go. And, totally. you know, so part of what I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, ask you, and I'll share my experience afterwards, but you know, mm -hmm. what in your experience are you starting to change sort of in the way you see things and in the way you do things that's helping to get off this train of do, do, do more, 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 more. Uh, you know, the, the idea of FOMO that comes in. Well, if I work really hard, I know I can make $2 million, but, but should I not? Should I, should I, you know, what are you doing? Well, so I think that the, the answer or the number right? When it comes to, let's say money, 
right. or the, the amount of things that you should be doing, how many supplements or how many tasks or how many gratitude practices or how many, any of those things, right? What ends up happening and the, the, the kind of the breakdown of where the, the old system comes into the new frame of thought is that we're always in this sense of maximizing. Right. So let me right. give you an example of like what I notice when I look at big cities, okay? And when I look at the difference between big cities and small cities, let's say, or small towns, is the bigger the city, normally the more expensive it is to live in the core center of that city, yeah. right? And so the more expensive it is, the more in a rush everyone else is. And the less time people have to do everything because they have to spend more time being able to afford living in that city in the first place. Right now, the city comes with all kinds of amazing perks, right? There's all kinds of things that are super convenient. There's great, you know, public systems to get around. There's, a, you know, the hospitals nearby, the red, your favorite restaurants nearby, the gym is nearby, everything's nearby, right? So you have that, you have that benefit and there's more people. And that's also to some, some people in some people's lifestyle, a great benefit. It's great for business. It's great for all kinds of stuff because it, it has a velocity that, that, kind of spins itself through collisions and through uh, connections that are essentially forming just because of the density of that space. But what happens is when we earn a certain amount of money, we get to a certain state, we, what we always do is we upgrade our life, right? right? We're like, right. oh, we deserve more. So upgrading our life in this scenario means we spend more money and we, we stretch a little bit further. But as we stretch further to the edges of our comfort zone, what ends up happening is that we think and we, we associate stretching your comfort zone and, and escaping your comfort zone as being the way that you grow, which is totally true. That is 100% correct. You have to be uncomfortable and seek some level of discomfort if you're going to move through energetically, emotionally, and you know even spiritually, if you want to say it that way, yeah. um, through some of the different challenges you're experiencing and facing. But, the, but if that's always the case, like if every time you get a raise at work, you take your raise and then you go and just expand your bills so that you're now back at at your, your you know your, your neck is barely right. above water yeah you're constantly making that thing happen then you will always be in the rat race no matter how much money you make because the more money you make the more problems or the more management you have to do of that of those resources as well right. and i'm not trying to complain about like you know, whoa, wow, my God, what a, what a powerful, horrible problem to have is that you have to manage your money, for example. But if you start thinking about this on another level where <clears throat> you invest in real estate, now the bigger your real estate, the more of the farm you have to take care of, the more taxes go up, the more challenges you have, the more insurance you have to pay. So it's not just one thing, but it's layers and layers of things that start to build over time because it's not just liquid cash, it's also investable assets, which over time is the correct way of winning the capitalism game. Right. But it is this endless race of just keeping up and moving money and moving resources over and over and over and over again. And so what ends up happening in that scenario is you can't afford time to go and stand outside to get your vitamin D in the normal way. So you have to buy it. And the more you buy it, the more that it's chipping away at the at the benefits that you're getting from living in the proximity of that big city. Right. But if I look at people in smaller towns and I look at the lifestyle of, of more of the rural you know, side of things, yes, they are, quote unquote, poorer. Yes, they have less value that is building up in their houses, you know, in, in on the outskirts of Toronto than than in the city of Toronto, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. Potentially. But even then. The lifestyle of being able to keep up require or requires less hustle. Sure. It requires less go, 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 and it creates more spaciousness, which allows the time for the gratitude practices for you to be able to go on vacation, for you to be able to kind of spend some downtime if you're feeling sick or whatever it is. Whereas yeah. that, that just is un, completely unaffordable for most people. And so what I notice is that the, the practice that I'm using is – how can I not expand to 100% of my capacity all the time? How yeah. can I expand to 100% or 110% when, when I'm looking for that growth in a particular category, but then in other categories, not do that at all? Never come close to redlining in certain categories of my life. Yeah. And, and, and instead operate at like 65%, 70%, 80%, right? In certain categories where I'm really getting most of the benefits that I need at this 80% level and I don't need to push, 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 just to get the absolute 
you know, we can have it all. Everything is possible all the time. Everything is, you deserve everything kind of lifestyle. And that, and that's just fruitless because it's, even when you get it all, all expands because you are approaching all from an ever expanding mentality. What yeah. got you to think about more is the mentality that will perpetuate once you get it. That yeah. You're like, well, it, it's just like being a, a lab rat, right? You go to the thing and you click, the, you hit the button and more food comes out. You're like, okay, great. So I might as well just hit the button over and over and over again to the point where you overdose essentially, right? Yeah. And we see this happen all the time with drugs and all kinds of stuff. Well, more stuff, more maximization, more hustle is another form of addiction. And sure. we just have to own that. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting too, because, I, and I find this a lot, and this is, this again, going back to the, we're basically like, you know, I'm putting the whole script of this documentary out on this interview right now. But it, one of the <laughs> one of the things that, that I've noticed a lot of, and, and don't get me wrong, like I've noticed this for years, I've been talking about it for years, but I'm really seeing it a lot more within the culture of, of people that are starting to think outside the box a little bit. And it's okay, it's part of our evolution, right? It's not, it's not to look upon this negatively or anything like that, but it's like, mm -hmm. Um, people are noticing that they do have an intrinsic sort of power or ability to to create, right? And and that's a beautiful thing. But a lot of the times, what we then choose to create is is from this this mental programmed, if you will, idea from our culture as to what will make you happy, what will be the best thing to have, or you know, so on and so forth, right? So you'll have people, for example. Um, okay, I, I realize I'm a creator, I'm a god or I'm a goddess or whatever it might be, right? Um, okay, so I want uh, this house and we create our vision board, right? And I want this house with this car and with this partner and, and it has to be like this. And it's like, well, so you have this emerging consciousness in you that says you have this ability to do something, but then you're using that, if you will, not to, to foster, hmm, what is humanity truly capable of and how can we live in a way that really lets us thrive instead we're thinking how can my life become this incredible sort of thing and, and so the, the question is not oh are you being selfish it's what layer of consciousness are you operating from this sort of singular it's about me you know it, me and my journey or is it this collective oneness based consciousness where you go you know what's good for that person is good for me and and i'm like, so I get all these things, I still have to live in the world that's completely and utterly challenging. But then the kicker to that too is like, well, this consciousness that I'm operating from that is wanting all the things and wanting the cars and wanting this, is we're seeking this happiness, we're seeking what we might call peace by getting things. And of course that's gonna be unsustainable because guess what, the moment you get it, you're gonna need, like you said, the next thing, right? And so the question becomes like, you know, what is the difference? And I'm curious to see, uh, you know, what some of your thoughts are on this and what you've explored within yourself. But it's like, what is yeah. the difference between what my true, authentic, myself, my soul, myself wants to do and create and how we want to serve this planet versus what my mind says I should do, I should have, should be my identity, should be what I go after. You know, what society says I should do, should have, should go after, what my friends and family say I should do, should have and go after, right? And, you know, getting to the core of what do we authentically, truly want to do and express and create. Totally. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in the name of your last documentary, Regenerate, right? The, the only thing that I want more of at this point is the things that are self-regenerative or self-generating and self-sustaining of sorts, right? Like, so I want more fruit trees. Yes. But more fruit trees means that it's more fruit, not only for me, but for, for the entire ecosystem. I want more uh, chickens to, so that we can move them around and take care and pasteurize essentially and, and improve the soil conditions of what was formerly a GMO corn and soil field, you know, at Valhalla at the farm that, that I run in, in Montreal. So there are certain things that I do want more of. I want more connection. Yeah. Right? I want to meet more people and, and hear more stories. Um, but we're in this state of mind where a lot of what we want is being influenced by social media. Right. And right. social media is for a long time was a game of volume. And for a long time was a game of like, just post as much as possible, more, 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 more. So it literally taught us yeah. that the more that I post, the more likes I can get, the more followers I can get, the more validation I can get. And also that does trickle down into power. Okay, mm -hmm. it is the power dynamic to have more followers. There's no ifs or buts about it. Yeah, and 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 then so people are hunting for this power, 
And we're in this scenario where we have all become hunter gatherers, whereas in the past, some of us were hunter gatherers, but some of us were doing other things. You know what I mean? We were building infrastructure. We were tending to the land. We were taking care of our health and wellness. We, but we weren't all participating in this game. Yeah. And so this game, and now that this game is getting more and more restrictive, yeah. and now you have to pay to play, it's become a game where those in power or those with its existing infrastructure become the winners of that game. In the same way that the, play, the big players, like the big banks, have a, a capacity to, to play the stock market like you can't, right? And, and they'll always win because they have access to those systems and physically, literally, can win because they have like a shorter distance or wire distance between me and the stock exchange and them and the stock exchange. Like sure. the, the level of competition that we are getting to in our society and in, in capitalism is literally boiling down to micro nanoseconds of data transfer and all <laughs> the things that go with that, Yeah. right? And there's this speed to market that now is the competition. And, and in the next level of this is like, and I'm competing in this because I, I built a career on it and, and I love it. I actually just genuinely love creating content. But if I'm not going live, if I'm not like going to the point of making a full live show with multiple camera angles and that whole thing, I know I'm, I'm falling behind. I know that yeah. financially I won't be able to keep up with the speed and content creation of the system and I won't be able to hit the headlines and I won't be able to hit and, and find that audience and gain that growth or, or ride certain waves that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more challenging to ride. Yeah. And so what I'm really championing here, what I'm expressing here is that there's two dynamics that you can look for in any ecosystem. And there's one, which is a competitive dynamic, right? And some ecosystems, by the way, even nature, has competition, yeah. right? And some weeds will like take over a whole area and, and they're essentially competitive and, they, and they'll weed out literally others, right? By just growing quicker and, and, and dealing with this system faster. But if you can instead approach life from the perspective of more of an ecosystem, regenerative ecosystem perspective yeah. and say, okay, well, what does it look like to, to have these things work in symbiosis? Like sure. if I want a lot of tomatoes, one of the best ways to grow is tomatoes is to grow basil next to tomatoes because they actually have, um, you know, uh, they actually take different nutrients from the soil, but they also help repel each other's pests. Yeah, and, and then and, and you can take it and put it in a tomato sauce, and it's like oh, and it's regenerative because right. if you grow it to tomato, now you have the seeds to grow thousands more tomatoes. That's it. And so it's literally a practice that, by definition, is selfish because I want a tomato. Yeah, but also selfless because the bees pro profit from having me growing the tomatoes, the basil does well, the soil con conditions improve, and I could grow more tomatoes for other people. And so the reality over time is that that type of practice and what you can see as self-generating, you can notice in other aspects of your life, uh -huh. right? If you're trying to keep up, if you're like running and keeping up, keeping up, keeping up, and you're always in this kind of catch-up mode, you know that it is not self-generating you know that your passions aren't particularly there or maybe you're trying to just follow what Tim Ferriss recommended you do in your morning routine rather than what you would naturally do in your morning routine, yeah. right? Like, and, and we are sold the, uh, the answer all the time. Like, let's remember that breakfast was sold to the, American, to the Americans, right? right. And, then, and not only breakfast, but like dessert for breakfast, which is like high sugar, <laughs> high yeah. corn, syrup, uh, corn syrup, like, you know, like pancakes with bacon and blah, blah, blah. All that stuff was sold. Right. Yeah. The most important meal of the day was done on essentially bogus science. Right. And the only science that proves anything is that if you're in learning or you're a kid or you're in developmental years, that it's, it is helpful to eat breakfast. But beyond that, it is a total fallacy run and paid for by breakfast companies. Sure. And so where are you being sold something like even Gary V who, you know, I, I can respect his hustle and his brand and, and his message. And I think he does make a point. Like there are a lot of lazy people who need to do and put in more work. Yeah. Um, but what I'll say is even his brand is meant to invoke something. And he's yeah. just championing and hitting his brand over and over and over again. But I think that he would champion a lot more balance than you would think. And if you really pay attention to his content, you know that. But at the same time, you know, people just hear the surface level item and they see the meme and they're just like, yeah, hustle, move, go, yeah, do more. And, and that's, you know, a, a challenge. And I'll, I'll leave with, I'll, I'll say one last thing, which is my entire journey of even why I started the farm, why I started 
Superhero Academy, why I started Valhalla, which is the name of the farm, is um, is because I learned, I, I, I typed into Google if everyone lived like, and then there was an auto populate that said the average American. And I saw this, this kind of study that was done by the Global Footprint Network in 2011 that said, if everyone lived like the average American, we would need 4.1 planets to survive. And then I Googled the Canadian number and it was five because we have less, we have like a ton of roads and a ton of electricity and heating, blah, blah, blah. We have less people per capita. So per capita, if everyone lived like me, yeah. you would need five planets to survive. And I'm not even living like the average Canadian. I'm probably living like the above average Canadian from the perspective of the, just the privilege and the, and the, and the, the, the hustle that I've been able to get to. Um, and not only me, but my family who came to this country as immigrants who were dirt poor. Yeah. So, but if everyone did that, if everyone just built the, the big house with the white picket fence and essentially the, you know, bought the Ferrari and did the whole thing, we, we can't sustain that. But yeah. there are ways that we can. And, and I think it's just, we have to look at ourselves deeply as to whether or not this is truly us. Like, do we really want the Ferrari or we, do we just want the flex of the Ferrari? Right. You know what I mean? Like, can, can we not get away with like renting a Ferrari from time to time? Even if you, want the grill? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is there not yeah. ways that we can share further? And sure. I think that that's going to, that's going to thrive more and more. And I, I, the, the tech world is catching up to elements of that, the sharing economy of like Airbnb and Ubers and, and, you know, I think over time, self-driving cars, those kinds of things will reduce our burden and load on things. But the, but, but the sickness that you have, or that I have, I'll speak for myself, that I have sometimes, which is, oh, well, I save money here so I can spend it over there right. and then constantly expand to my limits. That that's in inside that's that we have to deal with right here you know what i mean yeah yeah it's it's you know it's almost like um it's we're, we're often quick especially you know people again that are sort of thinking outside the box a little bit will will often say oh well you know the system is causing me to do x or this because of the system i have to do things this way and you know oftentimes too i say you know like there's there's a lot of ways that you can live life within the systems that we have but still free yourself up in a lot of ways right like and that's kind of like what you talked about a lot of is like you know, what are ways that we can live at, with the system it is today that does regenerate or that, you know, might be built a little bit more around the idea of sustainability and, and some of these things. Like, how can we turn off the, the virus, if you will, in our mind that is constantly saying, I need more, I need more, I need to do this, you know, listening to the way uh, pop culture is telling us we need to operate and all these sorts of things. And there's ways to do that. And I think for a lot of people, especially in this moment right now, um, you know, that's, that's one of the steps we can take. That's one of the, the, the things that we can do is, is slow life down, you know, create a little bit of an effort to slow life down and to really start looking at, hey, what is it within my current day that I can do that feels more authentic to myself and I can get off of that, that rat race, that wheel a little bit. And when people say, okay, well, you know, how do I do that? I can't even stop my mind. It's like, start, take your phone, put it down, take the TV, turn it off and literally spend an entire Saturday, you know, just in your yard connecting with one person, just, you know, turn off the music even just if we don't create that space, like people say, it's so hard for me to connect. It's so hard for me to connect. And I say, what effort are you making to connect? Oh, well, I said, I tried to meditate this morning. Right. But it, it's like when you've been go, 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 go for say five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Do you know how long it's going to take to wind down a little bit just so that you can start to feel that essence of who you are again? Like it's there. It can happen. I mean, I, a couple years ago, I think it was about a year and a half or maybe it was a year ago. I don't even remember. Um, but I, I took five days. I took five days away from CE, from everything. And I went to a hotel room that I rented down the street from where I live. And I just, I disconnected. And I just breathed, just breathed. And people would say, well, like, whoa, but, but what about all the practices? What about all the things that you do in your routine all the time to keep up? And I'm like, the routines are just band-aids, right? If for me at that time, there was a greater challenge that was emerging. And that challenge was that there were aspects, right? And this kind of goes back to the story and, and why I related so much to your initial post there was about five years ago, maybe it was six years ago, right? So when C was maybe like five years old, um, it had grown and it was always just like a passion project, passion project, passion project. And then all of a sudden we were making a couple million dollars a year as a company and you go, okay, um, this is, this is cool. The money was always, it was always saved. It was just, I saved, I saved, I saved, I saved, I saved because there was bigger projects, bigger plans, bigger ideas that 
were there to serve humanity that I wanted to use. But then I started to meet some other people and they came into the company and they started to give me all of these different ideas and it was like whatever. And, and next thing I know, we, we, I just talked about this with Arjun the other day. Next thing I knew, I'm like, the environment, the culture around here is starting to change and, and people are starting to push for, like there was about four people that were, that were just not aligned with the way C had always run. And it was now it was about we could we can we can make and do this and we can build this and we could do all these different things that at the time these people's energies were it's about me. It's about what I want. It's about what I want to create. It's about what I can build. It's about the fame that I can get. And C has never operated that way, right? And so and I can I level with that. I, I can understand why that is alluring and powerful. And, and I, I think I've been victim of those, of that same thought and mentality and, and kind of push forward as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think we all are in some capacity. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I like, you know, I love that you're talking about it. I think it's, it is, it is it's something that pervasively follows a culture when there is success. Yeah. It becomes part of this well, what if we did more? What if we can like right. take this and flip it into this other thing? And, and uh, you know, right. and that's a rabbit hole, you know, in entrepreneurship is a huge rabbit hole. Yeah, and absolutely. And as that started to come in, I started to notice, I was like, there, it was, it was at the beginning, it was very hard to personally be influenced by those ideas. But, yeah. but then at the same time, I was like, well, okay, maybe that's an okay idea. Let's, let's try that. Let's try it. And then eventually, for a short period of time, things started to actually get more difficult. And yeah. because it, there, was, there was less uh, desire to just do what absolutely was going to serve people the best, best possible way, which is what I would always ask myself. And then all of a sudden, it, it started to become like, well, now I'm being influenced by this idea to just, you know, build this or do more or to do this or to do that. And I'm like, whoa. And then like, after, after a little bit, I noticed, and this was a learning process for me, is I had gotten myself in this situation where I had a partner in, in something that we were doing, and they had taken a project to a point that I could never in my life resonate with. The way it was operating, the way it was flowing, what it was doing, and I'm like, oh my Jesus. And, and here it was, like, you know, I personally, like, we're talking about ownership stake and financial, it's like I, I owned like 75% of this and I felt like I had no say. I felt like it, the energy had just gone in a completely different direction. And I'm like, this is what happens when I don't speak up. This is what happens when I let my own inner knowing be shifted into different ideas of like what is the right thing to do, what you should be doing as that next step. So I got this really cool wake up call as to, okay, this is what it feels like to go down this path, right? Because prior to that, I mean, I was always kind of a, 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 a rebel growing up, right? I always just did things opposite of what society would do. But I got to experience it, I got to feel it. And then over the course of time, we, you know, we've, we got, we, we, you know, disconnected with some of those people, we changed the way things function and we, things have, you know, been brought back to sort of quote unquote normal again. But I look at that and this going back to the, the original point that I was making prior to this story was that it's like, it was this idea that it doesn't matter how many routines you do if you're not aligned with yourself, if you're not aligned with what your your heart and soul is here to do, is here to create, is here to you know be part of, your energy is going to get drained and pulled and you can drink all the lemon water you want. <laughs> you can do all the meditation you want. A connection is going to be very difficult. Yeah, well, I think, I think what sometimes what ends up happening is as an entrepreneur or as a as a a piece of an ecosystem, let's mm -hmm. say, right? We spend an, an enormous amount of time like doing the initial, like putting the initial idea together, doing the initial push and getting that initial growth. And that's like really, really, really difficult to survive, yeah. right? Get to that five year mark in any business. I think it's like like one in five businesses never get, get there, right? right. Or, or sorry, or, yeah, or sorry, four one in five, five businesses yes. never get there. Yeah. Only one in five businesses get there, right? So the idea of like, that initial push and surviving that and then getting to a place where there's enough kind of abundance or enough resource essentially to now do more, quote unquote, what ends up happening is that there's also an exhaustion that comes from the initial journey. Yeah. And so then what we, what we hope for is that other people lead, 
like, oh, okay, let me bring on this person. Okay, they'll take sure. over the edits. They'll, do, they'll start writing the articles because, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's partially because we got bored of some of the elements of it and we want to expand and grow as an individual. But it's also because we are desperate for, for leadership in other people. And lastly, it's that we actually really care about watching them go through their initial push and, and them yeah. make something of their own. And so all of those things are well-meaning, mm -hmm. but over time lead to uh, continuous growth of stress, right? The bigger the company, the bigger the organization, yeah. the more people that it has, the more money that it's moving, the more resources, the more talent, the more blah, 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 the more challenges it faces, right? And, and what is the cost of stress? What are the cost of the, of the things that we are not taking account for? And in the world of climate change, we, we don't have to go down. You know, we, we talk about like, what is the cost to environment when we are doing certain things, right? When, yeah. And it doesn't even have to be just climate change. In fact, it's more around when it comes to the environment, what is the cost of like polluting the river to make the, the cheap t-shirt that somebody's sure. wearing or whatever it is, right? What is that cost? And, and, and where's the line, right? Like in America, it's, it's all about like, a, there's a huge social uprising with Black Lives Matter. Right? It's like, okay, we don't want slaves. It's like, yeah, but Nike is made by s slaves in China. So, but we're cool with Nike. Like, so right. where right. is the line? Where, where do we put the line between this element of, of morality and this element of supporting of, of, of anything? And, and it's difficult because there is no, your intention at the beginning could be incredibly pure, but with the right, the wrong conditions and the wrong alignment, it can move in the different directions. And we spend so much time just go, go, going that we don't spend enough time aligning. And the more that I've, st I've spent, stepped back yeah. to align and ask myself, okay, like, what are the conditions that are necessary for this farm, for example, to get to that next level? What do I need to feel and how do I need to feel and who do I need to be surrounded by for this to really move in that direction in the right and in the, the way that I believe the vision is being held pure and kind of moving in that direction. And, and on a very spiritual level, when you do that, it actually flows so much easier. Yeah. The stress levels go down. Actually, all the things start to show up and, and the resources just start flowing, flowing in your direction. Yeah. And that's, yeah. it's the weirdest thing ever. It is, it is such a game with yourself, right? Like the, the trust game of money, the trust game of partnerships, the trust game of relationships, the trust game of all of these things are, are a game that we play in the mirror yeah. in many yeah. different ways. And and it's when we ourselves start exerting energies of trying to get more that we become, in a, in a sense, we move from being the villain to, the, or sorry, the hero to the villain mm -hmm. we, in certain scenarios. And, and not just the villain from like a morality perspective for the world, but our own villain. We become the toxicity yeah. that, yeah. that builds up in our body. We become <laughs> that literally. Yeah. that we that we store on our energy because we're holding on to the emotions and we're holding on to the stress of those different systems and that's and that's it so yeah the give yourself space mm -hmm. you know and and, and i of, of all the things of the coronavirus and you know again it won't go into what's true or not or whatever it is yeah of all the things that happened with the coronavirus what what i could say was beautiful about it is we all got to pause for a minute yeah like it was this really great big pause and, and I hope that a lot of people recognize what is truly theirs and what is truly essential and what is truly something that's serving them and whether they're really working in a job that they really love or that they're really chasing after their passions or that they're really morally following their heart and, and doing something that they believe in. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope, I hope that there is more of a recalibration around that, but uh, it's challenging and we, and we need mentors and guides and, and we need, you know, people who have done and walked this path before to share their knowledge with others who haven't and, and, and that's, you know, the secret for me, um, yeah. you know, rather than just consuming content, it's like, can I find real mentors that I build deep relationships with? Sure. Can I build a relationship, even the relationship I've had with you, mm -hmm. right? It's like for years, we've gone back and forth on just like, hey, what are you noticing over there? Like, what's going yeah. on over here? Have you tried this or you tried that? And right before this call, we were speaking about microphone, <laughs> camera <laughs> yeah. setups and things, right? So, so it's, but it's building those long lasting relationships that have beautiful impact. And, and that yeah. is an ecosystem. And that's, and that's, you know, how life thrives yeah absolutely and and it, you know going back to the coronavirus for a second is it's like that you know somebody people were asking me right because you know people have different perceptions of what ce is right it's some people are like oh yeah it's this you know very conscious sort of spiritual sort of platform and other people are like oh well you know they write about a lot of conspiracies and it's like well it's, everybody has a different perception as to what it is and so i had a lot of people come into me saying what's going on with the coronavirus what's going on with the coronavirus and i said this was in within like the first week 
I said, honestly, I've, I have nothing coming through my higher self telling me that to, to focus all of my time and energy on figuring out all the details as to what's going on. The only message that's coming through me is one thing. Chill. Like, tell everybody, relax. Take the time to be out of normal. To, like, allow your neural pathways to not get back to the addiction of normal. Allow it all to come, to, to come out, to, to just be free. And then think about whether you truly want to go back to normal whatever that means and of course and this is kind of what i want to talk about in in the second hour of this a little bit um so we'll, we'll sort of cap off this first hour here but uh, just to sort of uh preface it for those um that uh that are not going to necessarily jump on in a cdv and watch the second hour it's like that we have this opportunity right now right to really explore the depths of what it is we're doing on this planet Right. The, 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 the programs and the, the, the quote unquote, the, the virus or the sickness that we sometimes call um, that we're doing where we're constantly consuming. We have an opportunity with this coronavirus stuff. There's so many different possibilities um, as to what it, this whole thing can bring up within people. And, and I think we can discuss some of these ideas. And I, there's a couple of questions I really want to ask you about some of the stuff you've looked into and worked on for the past little while. But you know, we'll cap this, uh, this, this part off over here. And uh, for those that want to dive into part two, we'll be here on CETV. Do it. Dive in. That's all.